So uh, this is an informal business meeting between Jim, Rick, and I that we had, uh, you know, I guess it was about a month ago, and it was concerning a contract bid that we're working up to rebuild six Super Cubs that need to be stripped and recovered. What's the matter? What kind of a host is this? Well, I, he called me on the phone and said, hey, we'll be there at 7. <laughs> <laughs> Stay away. Yeah. So, what's new? Yeah, tell me about it. Plywood? Is it plywood? Oh, cool. Hey, have you thought about for landing gear tires and wheels, uh, looking into those little mobility scooters that these old timers use? I saw a thing on YouTube where a guy used one for a tailwheel on a uh, Super Cub or something like that. It looked pretty good. I thought, well, maybe they'll make a good, you know, balloon type tire. Are you going to use spoked wheels or what? Motorcycle wheels, but a very modern mag wheel. That would be very interesting. Man, that's looking good, Rick. Proud of you. You've been drinking too much beer. <laughs> drinking beer and playing on YouTube. That's what you've been doing. <laughs> Oh yeah, a lot of drama going on. And I've been watching Wendy Ertnowski videos lately. Phew. I'm getting a hankering to build another control line stock model. Oh yeah, and they're good airplanes too. Yeah. You ever seen any of those Al Raby, uh, the Mustangs and the Bearcats? Beautiful scale. I've got the drawings for both of them, the Bearcat and the Mustang. I've got the I've built the sterling versions about the same size as I've seen the Oh, shoot, I can't think of the name of the chip now, but I've got that now. That's what I'm going to do. Is it one of those? Dumas? Dumas, yeah. Huh. I want to build well, one. Well, you've got one. Did you get mine, or is mine still out there? I didn't take yours. Okay, I, I, I kept I it. <laughs> Well, he'd never know it for a, at least well, a year. I built and be flying it. Go, yeah. Well, I, I had to build that one I got. And I go, whoop. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that Waco cab will be cool. You can control Love Wacos. Mm -hmm. When I had money, when I still had a job, I looked at one, but went up to the northwest when I went up to see the GB uh, QED. Once when I was up there, I was supposed to go look at one, but they had at a uh, a biplane ride place, and I was thinking about getting it. I didn't, I didn't even get to see it when I was up there, I saw pictures of it, but I, when I was at the National Biplane Fly-In, I was talking to the guy I had one, and I said, I'm going up to the Northwest to look at one of those, and he said, that's it. You, you bought it. Said, yes, they are. They just, they just have a look that nobody else has. And 
that I love, the it's SRE. Pretty. The only one that's just pretty is the Staggerway. Hell yeah. yeah. A red, all red trimmed in black Staggerway with gold speed light. Oh, that's pretty. Or red with maroon trim and a gold fence mm -hmm. right there. What is the uh, the little wing up there? A little what? Well, it's that little thing I, I picked up a while ago. Oh, something I scratch built here several years back. Oh, no. A little bit. That's that right there. Did you saw that back off to get it flat? Or? Yeah. I took just about a quarter inch off of it. So you got a recess. That's good. I'm thinking about going with polycrylic on this stuff. Yeah. Because yeah, you can't hardly get varnish anymore. I mean, you can, but... Mm -hmm. Polycrylic, water base. Oh, well, yeah, I've used polycrylic. Acrylic. Well, what, yeah, but what's going to go, what's going to put the fabric on? It won't dissolve it. Dope, dope won't. We used it on the models. And it'll harden up that wood so you can sand it. Well, this bolt model I got in here is covered with two coats. Sanded between two coats. And it's just like... Oh, yeah. yeah. Taking on glass. It's good stuff. I like it. Well, I had to it to it go. Yeah. The other thing is you can sand it and glue it. Uh-huh. It's not like the varnish you know, that's got the uh, thinners in it. It'll cause glue to look out. This doesn't have thinners in it. It's water -based. You notice the uh, all the little cracking and checking and all of that. Well, poly polyfiber is what they requested. Well, I mean that's fine. I just wanted to ask that question. Ah, ah. Polyfiber is foolproof. It's uh, easy to work with. Uh, it's good stuff. I like it. Works for me. I want that thing right there. I want Andy to get one. Oh, is that real or model? It's a steerman. Like, no, I don't care. It's a steerman. <laughs> because I said real or model, you're going to say, oh, that's a model. Is it's it real or is it a model? Well, I, I'm not close enough to it. How close you got to be? Hmm? How close you got to be? About six inches. <laughs> yeah. Six whole inches? There's been another development also. What's that? I was... What about that? I think those pictures are a little distorted. About Something that? about the resolution. Is that a Tommy Morris they're, scalp? They're all models. They're all our same. But anyway, what other... So anyway... <laughs> what? He's trying to wipe the... I mean, my coke. I thought I'd drop coke on the deal. Yeah. So, starting on page one, I talked to Cup Crafters and Legend, and they were both reluctant to give a quote because they said, My God, you don't know what you're going to get into until you get into it. They said, You're going to paint yourself into a corner if you go to throwing out numbers at this stage of the game. You can give a ballpark. But he said, don't ever, we don't ever commit to a, a firm number until we've got that airplane torn up. So both of them were pretty much like that. And they were pretty close together on their prices. Uh, Cub Crafters is between forty and 80000 And uh, Legend is between thirty eight five and 80000 and the turnaround time is four to five months. I'm figuring probably a uh, thousand man hours uh, to do that. And, that's and we're going to do it in uh, eight, and you owe me a steak dinner. I didn't make that bet, but uh, you'd be surprised if we run into 1,200 or 1,400 hours. Well, okay, okay. well, now wait a minute. This 800 is to uh, is the basic recovery. No, if it you has were to, oh no, you keep changing it. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> he keeps if changing it. If you have to it. put a whole new bottom set of stringers on it, 
800 hours is out the door. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, I'm telling you. Are, are we going to be in. You get them uncovered and we find problems, are we fixing that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And, and it's extra. Okay, all right. Uh, this does not we, cover even blasting and priming. It does not cover blasting and priming. Nope. So that was my next question. Are we going to blast all this stuff? Yep. We are going to blast all this stuff? Just like we did in the old days. You go up to the blaster and tell them this is 4130 thin wall. you got to turn that pressure way down. Well, that means soda. Huh? Well, it'd be better soda to use a media blaster. It doesn't eat up the steel. Yeah. Well, we did, did it both ways. Yeah. Uh, but you're right, it would be better with walnut uh, shells or well, something, uh, like something that. synthetic instead of just plain old gravel. Yeah. Yeah. That is pretty abrasive. Okay, we gotta blast them, we gotta kill them, we gotta kill them, take them apart and blast them. Yep. Fix what we find and then put them all back together. That's basically an overhaul, a rebuild. That's exactly what it is. You know, it's not just a rebuild. I wonder if well, you see, who was it that did the Satabri? Legend? They told me uh, that that airplane came in, there wasn't a problem with it. They took the uh, fabric off, cleaned it up a little bit, and recovered it, 40000 No trouble, no problems. Yeah, for a fairly new airplane, how old are these airplanes? I don't know. Okay. Well, you know. I think they're older airplanes. They had the old 320 engines in them. Well, originally. You're going to run into stuff in the bottom of the tail that mm -hmm. you're going to have to look at. Because, I mean, they're using the tail of this airplane to do all its work. So oh, if yeah. it's not right, somebody's going to get hurt. Well, I guarantee you, you're going to find problems. Right. So anyway, let's get to the page two. Jamie started popping off to uh, Pontiac over here. Uh, 17500 bucks. Well, I put the numbers to it. Jamie is uh, estimating 850 man hours at $20 an hour. And we haven't, oh, we haven't charged... Put Jamie's estimating, estimating 350 hours at $50 an hour. No, I, I put the numbers to it. 850 hours, 20 bucks an hour. That comes to uh, seventeen thousand five hundred dollars. Uh, but he's he's still living in the nineteen nineties. That's what we charged back then. We haven't charged that in fifteen years. He's charging uh, sixty. I think he's charging sixty now. Okay. Who, who's gonna own these airplanes when they're done? Is it still gonna go off the trail here? Yep. Yep. Okay, the Air Force is not going to lay claim to it? I guess it's a lease or a lease, <coughs> some kind of a lease back operation. Yeah. Okay, um, realizing that the Air Force really has unlimited funds. No, they we, don't leave well, it. No, they what? do. They do. It's just their budget people that get to figure that and screw it up. we we got to look at it from the standpoint that this is... Mr. Big Bucks, mm -hmm. and Mr. Big Bucks needs to pay the right price to get this done. Oh, yeah. Well, you're right. Well, they paid the right price to get Carol and, uh, what's his name, Bob? Pete. It's Pete. I mean, Bob. a million bucks for those six airplanes. A million? Yep. Well, they didn't, I don't think they paid them. They, they have. Well, that's what they've got into it. They allocate. Yeah. Okay, Jim's. As to money, he was wanting to charge fifty an hour, and that comes to fifty thousand bucks in labor alone. Uh, oh, and and uh, okay, we'll, we'll go back to that. So that's out of the question, I think. I, I think they would. I, mean, I ain't working for less than fifty an hour. That's what yeah. Uh, then you can drop down to forty an hour. Uh, that's forty thousand bucks. For a, you know, you go in there, nothing wrong, recover. Yeah, well, that's, that's the best case scenario. But, but I think the, the best all around, well, you can even go down to, well, we're not even going to go down to 25 or 30. 35 is about the happy medium. And 
hour. That's going to be 35000 in labor. Uh, so, I, th I think that's a good starting point. And then everything else is extra. The dope, the fabric, the sandblasting, the nuts, the bolts, everything. Yeah, okay. yeah that has to be above the, the labor cost. Yeah. The labor. That's 60% of the job is the labor. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know there's going to be repairs on oh, some of those sure. airplanes anyway. If not a little wood repair, you know, if you've got crazy windows, stuff that needs to be spruced if they won't polish, they're, they're going to want them replaced, oh, yeah. you know that. You know those butt ribs on Super Cubs, every one of them have the fairings screwed on with PK screws. Oh, that's right. And yeah, every right. one of them are going to be stripped out and messed up, so you're going to have to have new butt ribs. Uh, Wing tips, who knows? You're not going to know until you get into it. Yeah. So, I think probably, and you, you know, you can look at the paperwork and tell me if I'm wrong. I think the uh, 35 an hour labor is a good, good medium. Because you're not really trying to screw them. Okay, what if we. Uh can, what if we hold it to 50 an hour? Then you're probably going to run into something like, well, uh, 50 bucks an hour, we want them out in two hours. Let me tell you something the Air Force does do, okay? The Air Force pays by the number of man hours put on a project. And it's 10 cents or $10,000 an hour. And what they do is that if it takes you five hours to do it today, they pay you five hours. It takes you three hours to do it the next day, they pay you three hours. If it takes you ten hours to do it the next day, they pay you ten hours. That's how they pay. And we're still not clear on where the pay is going to come from. Yeah. Who is paying for this? Well, I would imagine that they're probably going to probably filter it through her since she's the, the, the main character in this whole operation. I would figure that's where it's coming from. Well, he has to put in, well, this is what we need for this, and then, and then they pay it. If, if, if they pay, I don't care where it comes from or how it's done. Well, I don't either. And I talked to him today, and he said what he was thinking was pay half of it up front, and then the other half when it's done. That's not a... No, that's that, way, and, that way you can get all your materials in, in hand. Well, no, see, also, I was, I was going to tell him, you will order the materials you pay for. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That pay half is that labor. That labor? Okay. Right. Yeah. And everything in addition to, to that is extra. Yeah. Well, you know, we don't want to get in a situation where, okay, well, you know, aircraft screws is out of picket tape. Yeah. we got to wait till they get some. we, we got to have picket tape. These are kits. Complete kits for the airplane? It comes with everything stitching needed. tape. Reinforcing tape, rib stabilization tape, test tape, everything. It's about five grand. Here's another thing you got to watch out for: is the inevitable delays. We can't put ourselves in a corner and say sixty days, and you'll have your bright and shiny new airplane, because who knows what's going to happen. Yeah, exactly. I mean, somebody gets sick, somebody gets hurt, lights go out, I mean, who knows? But, you know, there again, until you've gone through the, at least the first two, you can't put a time limit on it. Yeah. Of any kind. You know, you're going to say, okay, it's going to do a thousand plus or minus five hundred. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, let's see, where it was. Well, we can, we can tell them, we think we'll be out in two months, uh, they can, like I said, he can monitor. He can come over every three days and see what's going on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And but that's what he. That's one thing he likes. I 60, pointed that out to him. 60, he said, "I like that." Sixty days on, on one airplane is not, not. I don't think it's unreasonable. No, days. but that that certainly is a goof and off. You're going to well, be. Well, I mean, that's not really concrete. But I'm just saying, in general, sixty days would probably yeah. be pretty close. Yeah, that's going to take some dedicated effort. Uh, 
I was thinking, of course, I'm, you know, I was thinking six days a week, eight hours a day. How many? Six. And how many hours? Eight. Seven. Eight. Six or seven. That's not Six or seven hours a day? No. For, for six days. Forty no, hours. No, eight hours a day. For, for six days a week. Well, well let yeah. me give you the numbers. Do you know? Okay. Eight hours a day. That's 48 hours per week. Times four weeks is 192 hours. Now, we've got a figure on 333 hours per man. All right, uh, and you multiply that by two, and that gives you 384 hours. So there's a little bonus right there. Yes. Um, so you got a little wiggle room right there. Well, but you really need to be putting in 333 and a half hours a month to meet well, that. Well, that, 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 depending on how it works out, you know, 30 to 60 days. Yeah. Give or take, yeah. Yeah. I could see with no severe problem with one. I mean, if we're going to have it blasted, that means the whole thing's got to come completely apart. Oh, yeah. yeah. Everything comes off of it. Not everything, okay. right? Uh, compression struts in the yeah, wings. Everything, yeah. Everything, yeah. yeah. Fittings, all of that. It's, it's, a, it's a naked fuselage and tail feathers when it leaves. Yeah. yeah. That in itself is going to take the three of us a week to do. Oh, yeah. At yeah. minimum, a week. Just tear down, and you know how putting it back together takes long. No, it takes forever to get them back together. I'm going to suggest something on the tear down. Okay, I'm talking about this down there. What we need to do is come up with a system. We pull an airplane in there, and we have this shelves along the wall, and it says shelling, struts, ailerons, and it's the hardware too. Mm -hmm. I mean, it goes in that category in each bin for each designated piece. That way, when you start putting the thing back together, it's not going to crumble through the crap trying to find right. it. Right, yeah. You know, that's how we did cars. Well, when I did the cup, everything was set, marked. That's the way I do stuff now. Yeah, and everything needs to be cataloged. You're sure. right. It, it needs it, to be it, cataloged. If you don't, then you've got a can of worms that are coming You're out. right. Yeah. You're exactly right. You can, you can go look in that room now, and there's stuff that says Miranda. Nothing gets put up that's not marked. Wrap tape around it, whatever. Well, and when the, when the cub was completely apart, I took Harold in there, and I said, Harold, if I die, you come here and look. There's you look. Part. You, you look at this stuff. Here it is. Your whole airplane is right in here. It's all marked. This is your stuff. But, but what I'm saying is we need to have, I'm really serious, designated spots for designated parts. Mm -hmm. So like, you pull the engine off, all the engine accessories and parts and everything sits there on the floor, and then the little boxes around it is all engine stuff and nothing else. Yeah. And go over here, and this is all the wheels and brakes, and over here is the tail wheel, all that stuff, you know. That way, when it comes to that point and you're ready to put the gear on, you just go and pick it all up and stick it on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, additional, additional expenses is the uh, STC for each airplane. Then your IA, you've got to have him sign yeah. off the 337s three, three, so and the annual. Huh? Yeah, yeah Ron, Ron did it for 50 bucks. Ron and is. we're going to have to come up with some decent scales. I think Hiram would let us use his digital scales. We can use Bob. I've already thought of that. Bob Steinman. Okay, has he got decent? No, they're better than that. Okay, what kind has he got? Are they digitized? I believe they are digitized. So, because it's going to have to be weighed and a new weight and balance. Well, you know, when you get to tearing into something like this, you just better expect the worst. Well, that's the thing, you know, it's just, especially with an airplane, if you don't keep things together while you're taking it apart, mm -hmm. you end up with a can of worms trying to put it together. Yeah. We 
it'd be good to take plenty of pictures and video too. Looks like when I was building. Look at here, look at here, they got. Yeah, Sully. Tom Hanks is playing the movie of Sully. Cullenberg. Oh, oh yeah. Pretty good. yeah. But when I was building cars over there, the Camaros, $150,000 pieces of car. We had a roll around. Huge roll around for each one. And as it was taken apart, it was put on that roll around with the car's name on it. And it stayed there. That way you knew exactly where the parts were that went back home. Mm -hmm. But that to me that's going to be an important factor in in, in the speed factor. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah you're right. And I'll shut up about that now. Uh. Let me turn this off and let's talk about something else. That's the way it is when you're dealing with teenagers. Now, I'm out here at that greater, I think it's the greater southwest flying field. Came out here to see if they were flying control line and nobody's out here, but they've got RC going. There's a guy out there with a great big huge extra of some sort, great big monster motor he's trying to fire up right now. Here, here, here. Yeah. Yeah, well, out here off of 820, you know, by by Randall Mill. Thank <laughs> you.